Do you want to build and tune cars capable of setting top leaderboard times? Well, you are in the right place, because that's exactly what I do. I will show you all the secrets when it comes to horizon tuning, so let's get started right away. First, we have to upgrade our car to a certain class. This numbers your performance index, or PI for short. You should always be looking for upgrades that give you the best performance for the lowest PI cost. And no matter what, don't trust the in-game stats. They are never accurate. We begin upgrading in conversion. Unfortunately, there are engine swaps that give you more power for the same PI cost. Here is a list of the most PI efficient engines. Now, for drivetrain, you either want to swap it or keep it stock. Most people will go for all-wheel drive. Now, we move on to aspiration. If you see the centrifugal supercharger, use it. It's simply the best PI efficient upgrade you can get for your engine. Otherwise, avoid other aspirations, unless it's the only way to get more power. If your car has body kits, it's usually best to install them as they give you more handling and wider tires. Now, onto aerodynamics. Both front and rear aero can increase your high speed handling on your car, but they also add drag which lowers your top speed. For front and all wheel drive cars, rear aero is a great way to lower your PI. For rear wheel drive cars, it's usually a necessity unless your car already has enough handling. If you went with the rear arrow, you might also want to consider front arrow. It comes with a PI cost, but it can be worth it, especially if you need more handling or your car is way too understeery. Now we move on to tires. For dirt and cross country, off-road tires are almost always the best choice for B-Class and above. For road racing, here are the most commonly used compounds for each class. However, depending on the handling of your car, you might need to upgrade or downgrade your compound. The lateral juice stat you see when installing upgrades can give you an estimate on how much handling you need. Here are the most common values for each class. Try to avoid front tire width upgrade, especially on front and all-wheel drive cars. The PI is simply just not worth it. Only upgrade if you have no other options. Upgrade your rear tire width. For some reason, it lowers your PI in front and all-wheel drive cars. And even in rear-wheel drive cars, it's usually still worth it to upgrade. Changing rims can make your car lighter or heavier, and it's a great way to slightly increase or lower your PI. Upgrading rim size makes your car more responsive. Upgrading rear rim size is a great way to lower PI. Upgrading front track width gives you slightly better handling, however it can come with a PI cost. Upgrading rear track width can give you more stability, and it's usually free. Now, we move on to drivetrain. If you swap your drivetrain, upgrading clutch is a good way to increase your PI. On stock drivetrains, it's usually not worth upgrading, especially if you use manual clutch. On most cars, you want to get at least sport transmission, it sometimes even lowers your PI. If you are on race transmission, 6 or 7 gears is enough in most cars. However, you can get added weight by adding more gears, and that helps reduce your PI. Driveline is a weight reduction upgrade, and differential is free, so always upgrade it. Now, on the platform and handling. Don't upgrade your brakes unless the stock brakes are not good enough. Stock suspension is usually good enough for A-Class and below, and if not, upgrade to racer rally suspension. Install race anti-roll bars on both front and rear as it's free most of the time. Roll cage can improve handling on some cars, but it's usually not worth it. However, on some other cars, it's a good way to add weight and lower PI. Get the best possible weight reduction unless you need more power or already have reached the top of your class. Now, dump any remaining PI on engine upgrades. Upgrade aspiration first, then prioritize upgrades that reduce weight. Avoid upgrading camshaft unless you drive on automatic. Now, we're almost done upgrading and you should be a few PI points above or below the class you want. To increase PI, you could upgrade to lighter rims, driveline, clutch, and flywheel. To decrease PI, you could downgrade to heavier and larger rims, add cooling, roll cage, or extra gears. Now, onto tuning. Before we start, there are three things to keep in mind. First, while horizon physics are meant to be similar to real life, they're not entirely accurate. Some settings might look weird or way too aggressive, but that's just how it works in Horizon. Second, each car is different. One setting might not work on another car. And third, I'll be using metric units, and the conversions will be shown on screen. Here are our tuning options. Starting with the tires, lower tire pressure gives you more grip. However, too low and your tires will overheat and lose grip. 1.5 is usually the sweet spot for most tires. You could do a bit lower on off-road or drag compounds. On some tires, especially slicks, you might want to increase tire pressure for more responsiveness. Now, onto gearing. Adjust your final drive to achieve the best top speed while almost redlining your car in the final gear. Usually, the end of your final gear is between here and here. If you have race transmission, make sure the gears are identical and each gear is slightly shorter than the previous gear. Here's what it should look like. Now, we move on to alignment. For camber, start at negative 0.5 on both front and rear. Having more tire contact on the outside gives you more grip. However, having more negative camber on front and rear is a great way to improve turning on oversteery or understeery cars. Having toe out, especially on the front, can increase your turning radius, but it's usually the last resort and it adds instability. Put caster angle at 7 as it gives you more straight line stability and more camber while turning. 
for anti-roll bars, 165 is usually the way for front and all-wheel drive cars. Increasing front gives you more stability, and decreasing rear gives you less oversteer. For some dirt cars, you might want to start with 1030. For rear-wheel drive cars, you might want to start with 145 or 1550. Now, onto springs. Max out your ride height as it gives you the best weight transfer. Lower it if your car feels too floaty. Try to make it even on both front and rear. However, lower rear ride height can improve stability and rear grip. Spring rate is different for each car. For a road, it's usually between 60 and 100. Feel free to go stiffer if you want more responsiveness or softer if you want more weight transfer. For dirt, keep it softer. It's usually between 30 and 50. Stiffer settings can make your car unstable off-road. Now, on to damping. More rebound gives you more responsiveness, but too much will make your car lose traction over elevation changes. Usually, it's best between 8 and 12, but don't be afraid to go lower or high. Bump stiffness is pretty much the same, and it's usually between 3 and 5. You can go stiffer for more responsiveness, however too much can make your car bounce up onto bumps. Damping settings are pretty much the same for dirt and off-road. It really depends on the car, if it allows for softer or stiffer settings. Now, we move on to aero. Max out the front aero, there's no reason not to do so. The higher the class is, the more rear aero you need. For A class and below, it's usually the minimum. For S1 and S2, it's between 20 to 50 kgf below front aero, but feel free to go higher, especially on rear wheel drive cars, where you might need max rear aero. Now, on the brakes. Keep in mind that this slider is inversed, meaning moving the slider to the rear actually increases braking on the front. If you want better turn in while braking, move the slider to the front, but don't go too far as it might lower your braking power. If you want more stability while braking, move the slider to the rear, which can help in some S2 cars. If you are on ABS, keep the braking pressure between 90 and 100. If you use ABS off, having more pressure can give you better braking, but too much can lock up your wheels. I recommend keeping it between 100 and 140. Now on the differential. More acceleration gives you more oversteer when you are on the throttle, and deceleration is the opposite. On all-wheel drive cars, start with 100-0, 100-10 for road. This pulls your car the most and gives you more rotation when accelerating out of corners. However, too much pull will cause your car to oversteer. Lower your front excel if that happens. Lower the rear excel if the issue still exists. If you get too much oversteer when letting off the throttle, or if one of your wheels starts spinning, you will have to increase your rear decel. On dirt, you might have to use less front excel and more rear decel in general. Increasing front decel by a bit can add more stability. For center differential, start with 75 on road and 65 on dirt. More power to the rear gives you more oversteer, but don't go too much as sometimes you need your front wheels to pull you out of the corner. On rear front wheel drive cars, you only see two options. For rear wheel drive, start with 80 and 5 on balance builds, and 50 and 15 on power builds. On front wheel drive cars, start with 50 and 0. Tuning them is the same as all wheel drive cars. And that was everything. I tried to keep this as short as possible. I also put a link to a spreadsheet with all my tuning settings in the description. This is the end of the video and thank you for watching.